In this video, I'll talk about net change, or that is displacement of an object, as well as the total distance traveled. Our example is, an object moves with velocity v of t equals t squared minus 7t plus 6, measured in meters per second. Find the object's change in position from 0 to 6 seconds. So first of all, let's talk about what it means to have uh, net change, or displacement. That is, whether the object is going forward or backward, what is the change from 0 seconds to 6 seconds? So uh, it may have, the object may have gone forward some and backward some, but where, what is the difference in its final position? Well, to find position, position traveled, we think about this. If s of t is our position function, then the first derivative of that is our velocity function. So if we're given a velocity function, it makes sense that we would take the integral of that to get back to our position function. And specifically, if we were to take the integral with these limits of integration, 0 to 6 seconds, we would find the change in position. So let's do that. Let's find the integral of t squared minus 7t plus 6 with respect to t going from 0 to 6 or over the interval 0 to 6. And that is going to look like this. If we evaluate that, we get t to the third over 3 minus 7 halves t squared plus 6t, and we'll evaluate that from 0 to 6. So that gives us 6 to the third over 3 minus 7 halves times 6 squared plus 6 times 6. All of that minus, remember, we have to subtract all of this with 0 plugged in, and with this polynomial, it's just going to be 0, but uh, look out for that when you have trigonometric functions. Don't just throw the 0 away. So I'm just going to do it here just to show that you do want to make sure that that doesn't mess you up with anything. Okay, plus 6 times 0, and indeed, all of this does go to 0. And in the end, we just have this first part, and... That looks like negative 18. What's the label? Well, if the velocity is in meters per second, then the net change, or the position, is in meters. Net negative 18 meters. And you're saying, wait a minute. It went backwards. Well, yes, it did. And you're saying, another thing you might be thinking is, well, we took an integral. Sh shouldn't the area just be positive? Well, remember, if you take an integral, uh, that is commonly thought of as the area under a curve, but we also want to remember that it, uh, if that area is is beneath is beneath uh, the x-axis, then the integral shows up as negative. That's the kind of the easiest way to think about it. So this graph looks something like this. This is a pretty rough sketch, but I'll put some units on here. This is 1, and this is where x is 6. So absolutely, we are traveling forward here. If this blue is our velocity function, let me label that real quick. This is our velocity function. Then from 0 to 1 second, absolutely, we are going forward. The velocity is positive. However, from 1 to 6 seconds, our velocity is negative. So we are going backward, or this object is going backward from 1 to 6 seconds. So what happens with the, uh, the net change or the displacement is that the object moves forward a little bit, and then it moves backward a little bit, and so it uh, 
has a, a net change of 18 meters. So you could also think of it like this. If it was on a line, it went, it went forward a little bit, and then it turned around and went backward. So for one second it went forward, and then uh, the, the next five seconds it went backwards. So it ended up at a total of 18 units or 18 meters from from its whatever its position was at zero seconds. Okay, find the object's total distance, the total distance traveled. Well, that total distance is going to be the sum of forward plus backward. So I'll write that out. Sum of uh, the forward travel plus the backward travel, total distance traveled. So, for example, if you're driving your car and you get halfway to where you want it to be and then you drive back home, you can't just shut off your odometer and say, hey, I went zero miles. You, you, your total distance is the amount you went forward plus backward. So, let's, let's evaluate this. The way we're going to do this is we're going to say the integral from zero to one, because this is where the velocity changes its direction going from forward to backward. So the integral of t squared minus 7t plus 6 dt plus the opposite of the integral from 1 to 6. The opposite of the integral from 1 to 6. That's, that's this area of that same velocity function. t squared minus 7t plus 6. Now, absolutely, you could plug all these numbers in, and what you would get is 2 and 5 sixths minus, I'm coming over here now, minus negative 20 and 5 sixths. Because remember, this part is negative. The integral is negative. And we did plus the opposite. So I could I could really just to write it completely the same as what I did there. I said plus the opposite of that integral. Okay. I kind of skipped ahead to write just minus for for this part. So anyway, uh negative times a negative is a positive. So we've we've added you could also say it as the absolute value of and a lot of times in if people start doing these on their calculator, they just get um, used to just saying, hey, the absolute value of, of this integral. So in any event, you're adding this 2 and 5 sixths minus a negative or plus 20 and 5 sixths. So in the end, you get 23 and 2 thirds meters total distance, total distance traveled. So the object, now we know that the object went forward. It went forward a total of um, two and five sixths meters forward. And then it went 20 and five sixths meters backward. And you add those for the, the total distance traveled.